Hello everybody and welcome to another Train Sim review video. Today we're going to be looking at the East Coast Way once again on Train Sim World. And yeah, this is the second review I've done in one day actually, because this is still the 10th of uh, June 2020. And this time we're going to be looking at the East Coast Way Class 66, or aka Recycled Great Western Express Class 66 because I'm just you know it's it's inevitable that this is going to be recycled from the Great Western Express and there's going to be no changes whatsoever because it's Dovetail Games so you know and, and, and they love recycling anyhow let's see our Class 66 introduction here we go Trains in World let's give it a crack let's have a look at 66. Oh yes, and there's the uh, the new Train Sim World Evolution of Train Simulator yeah, yeah. coming soon. We've seen that video. Ah, here we are. Welcome to this BR Class 66 diesel electric locomotive in EWS livery. This brief introduction will cover shunting wagons within a yard and manual operations of junctions. Okay. Climb aboard to get started. Let's get inside the cab. I mean, the model of this is it is really nice. You can't fault it. I mean, just look at this. Uh, you know, this, this front end here. I mean, and, and the horn grill there is nice. You know, you can see the horns in there. It's it's a really nice model, I must admit. And you've got all the appropriate cabling and piping underneath the uh, locomotive underframe. And yeah, it's beautiful modelling on this 66. Can't fault it. It's a shame you can't go in the engine room or nothing though, because like, usually the engine room compartment will be through here, but you can't go in there. So A lot of time will be spent in the driver's seat. Oh, will it? Oh, the fuse cabinet. I like that, how you can open the fuse cabinet. That's nice. I've got all the... Um, so we've got the rail, uh, we've got the radio, event recorder, tail lights, air dryer, uh, engine pre lube fuse, ETCS fuse, headlights, marker lights, lights, yeah. So it's all the fuses, and you can actually switch the fuses, which is good. Fuel gauge fuse, windshield heater. AC control, control fuse, local control, engine control, rev control, aux generator feedback fuse, aux generator field fuse, computer control fuse, 24 volt supply fuse, fuel pump fuse, filter blower, motor fuse, main generator fuse, uh, fuel injector switch, that's cool. Ground relay cutout switch. Yeah, we've got some nice playability here and a lot of fiddly bits and pieces we can use in this uh, panel. Fire detection isolate switch, DSD isolate switch, cabinet lights, da -da -da -da. That's kind of cool, isn't it? We've got another fuels cabinet here. Oh, look, we've got more. This is good. Uh, generator field fuse, aux gen fuse, cab heaters. Parking brake. Yes, nice, isn't it? It's good that we've got that. Got second man side, got second man seat. Got a hot plate. Oh, we like that, so we can give a sort of a hot plate medium, hot plate high, that's cool. Yeah, so we can sort of give that sort of immersion that we're using the hot plate, that's cool. Fresh air on, that's cool. You can. Yeah, you can sort of do all the airs inside there. Oh, hot plate. So the hot plate's there. So if we turn it on, does it? Uh, yeah? Yes? I'm just doing this in a minute. I'll be down in a sec. I see, yeah. Activate the auxiliary systems as indicated. Set the isolation switch to run. Run. Master key. Yeah, insert that. Reverse forward. 
Oh, we've got to go to the EM2000 display now. We've got to press some stuff. Use the down cursor to navigate to the EM2000 display. Okay, so we've got to down. We've got to go down. Press F3. We've got to go on the brake cutoffs, okay. It doesn't really specify this. You should, it should specify this better. But instead it's just like saying, press these buttons, as it were. So it doesn't actually tell us what we're actually doing. It just says, press these buttons and it's all going to be okay. It would be nice to get some detail to know what we're actually doing here. See, now we've got to go back down here. So they haven't really told us what we're actually doing as such with the display. We'll be coupling to the wagons ahead and preparing the train for departure. Okay. The automatic brake is the main system used for slowing down the train. We're releasing it. That's good. It does sound like it's recycled sounds. It does look pretty much exactly the same as the Great Western Express 66, so I'm guessing it's identical. We've got to release it till it goes up to five on the bar, which is right there. Use the throttle lever to apply a small amount of power. Avoid excessive power or there may be a collision. You see the horn, okay, let's have a listen to this. Okay, so let's open the window actually to get more of the sound in. Let's listen to the horn, is it the same? Yep, still the uh, default recycled horn from the uh, Great Western Express and probably and, and, and I say the sounds are recycled from 66 version 2 in train simulators in railworks one as well so certainly or oh, certainly recycled that's for sure so we'll get to 10 mile an hour it says I mean the model's really nice. I mean we've got obviously we've got the nice crisply applied numbering, we've got the overhead warning stickers which are really nice, we've got the nice crisply applied EWS logo with the lead numbering. And and yeah, we've got a nice roof detail with the grills and all the rivets and the clips and some nice weathering on the actual engine top there. We've got a bit of clag. Yeah, we've got a bit of clag, it's not too bad. Find an automatic brake, we need to stop here. If you stop. Stop at location, the wagons. Okay, so now it tells us to go and get. Oh. It says stop here, and now it tells us to go and get the wagons. Okay, so we've got to. Overly keen on the sounds on this loco. I'm, I'm just, I just don't like the sounds. Like they could be better. <sighs> Lovely. Well, we need to start braking now. What was released? When I apply the brake. I'm going to crash, aren't I? Uh oh. Doof! Ah! Now! This locomotive is fitted with screw link couplings. These require the driver to leave the cab and manually couple the vehicles. Yeah, that, that was a very Climb aggressive Climb down from the cab and attach the coupling there. between the vehicles. Okay, that was really poor driving there. Sorry about that, guys. I don't, I don't really drive these that often. I don't, you know what I mean? This is the first time driving. Give us a break. Turn to care. I've got to do the shutdown now, haven't I? Wait, I've got a reverse. Really, it's asking me to reverse. 
Oh yeah, because this is prototypical. So, so we don't have to change cab, we just have to reverse. This is, this is definitely prototypical shunting with 66. Definitely. Because a 66 reverses. No, no we, don't, we don't change ends, we don't go into the other cab, we just reverse with it. This, I'm not being really funny, this, this isn't a very prototypical scenario at all. Well, a tutorial even. I mean, I suppose it is just a tutorial, it's not like it really matters too much. But, you know, as far as 66 goes, it is the same model, same Reduce everything. the power to zero and allow the locomotive to coast. It's the same, you know, model, same features. It's, it's recycled from the Great Western Express. Maybe it's had tiny little bits of mods, I don't know. But, um, yeah, the modelling, it does look really nice. I'm loving all the pipe work underneath, loving the weathering and the texturing. Loving the gauges that are all eligible. The fuel cap. I love the bogey wheels, the you know the, the way that the wheels, the, the bearing caps are moving with the wheels, that's really nice. So we've got to stop this location here coming up. We've got to apply the brakes. Get down there. Yeah, I'm just doing a review on this. Oh yes, yes you are. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine, yeah. There we go. Stop nice. It's now time to run the locomotive around the train. Climb down and uncouple the wagons. I've got to run around the train now. Maybe this is something to do with the fact that we had to reverse. Ah, uh, yes. Let's do this prototypically. I'm going under, so we've got to climb under. You're joking, you can't even climb under. Come on, no, really? Oh, that sucks. Okay, fair enough. We'll just, we'll just uncouple it from here. I, like how the, I love how the pipes in that wave. That's Return really cool. to the driver's seat and reverse the train back to the runaround position. Reverse again. It's totally prototypical running. I think there's a new transition of how he gets in the seat. I don't think that was done before. Like, you know, the way that he just... I think it was just automatically sat straight in the seat. I don't know whether you... You know, I mean, it had that sort of animation. That's, I don't know whether that's new or not. Anyhow, let's uh, reverse. Release our brake. It should do the sound, you know, the... the, the you know, usually, but uh, it doesn't seem to do that with this. Hey, hi. Awful horn. Oh yes, look how that just speeds off. That's really bad physics. How's the clag doing? We've got some good clag. I think the clag's better than what it was on Great Western Express. Because the clag was awful on that. On that 66. But uh, yeah, it's not too bad on this. Junctions in this yard are manually operated. This means they require the lever next to them to be moved by hand. Yeah, I've got to get out again. Climb down from the cab, walk over and operate the indicated manual junction lever. Yes, yes. Oh, we've got to actually move the thing this time, so it's not just a click, we've actually got to move it properly, I like that. That's nice. It's a nice little feature on east on this route. Uh, 
Here we go. To move around the wagons, set the direction of travel and to apply forward. power to get moving. Yes, yes. Let's just uh, release our brakes again. I mean, it just, that, the way it transitions, the way that it just notches up, I just don't think that sounds prototypical for 66, but that's Reduce just, the power to zero and allow the... Do we have instrument lights? Ah, we do. I is instrument lights, that's good. Do we have cab lights? Yep, may work. Good, good. That's what we like. C. Does any of these switches work? Yep, we have a brake overcharge button, parking brake button, parking brake apply button. Oh, we've got to stop here. Okay, there you go again. Now it's saying we've got to stop up there. So it's like, it tells you to stop here, but now it tells you to stop up there. Okay, so we've got emergency startup button, uh, emergency, sorry, engine startup button, engine stop button. Um, instrument light dimmer. Ah, yes, we like that. We can dim the lights on the instrument lights. Got train length switch. Emergency brake valve. Sand stick. Stick. Yes, sand sticks on. Okay, so you can turn it on and off. That's cool. Slow speed rocket. Ah, uh, slow speed sort of uh, you know, switch. Hazard button. AWS acknowledgement. None of this works, I don't think. Yeah. Blinds. Yeah, they all work. Oh, why does it? Have, why did I have to press the wrong way? I'm just really not used to driving these 66. It's not, they're just not, they're not really my bag, to be honest. Just, it's not going to release now the brakes, is it? Of course it isn't. Okay, so we're not moving now, this is just what you want in it. Let's just fresh the bollocks off on it, that'll do it. <laughs> Climb down from the cab, walk over and operate the indicated manual junction lever. Mm -hmm. There we are. Access the right track. I just oh it has to switch the other one as well, I've forgotten that. Okay, there we are. Return and sit in the driver's seat. So this is where we've got a reverse, because this is prototypical running this as you see. I think I saw something pop up on my uh, Facebook just then, yeah. Oh, that's a good reply. Okay, let's connect to the wagons. Why is my brakes not releasing now? Oh Jesus, why are my brakes not releasing? Release the direct brake, release the automatic. I swear I've had this this glitch is sort of common on a few locos and trains and like that. Oh, 
oh, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna shut this cab down. I can't be I can't be asked for this. Can we just can we just take how do we take the master master key off? Okay, let's get rid of it. Let's shut the cab down and go into the other cab. Yes, go in the other cab. The other cab's probably better for use anyway. Collect the wagons from the other cab. Because oh, this is different, isn't it? Let's put our key on. Put it forward. I think I just saw another train pass here. Yeah. See the brakes going up in this end. So we're good. This is this is prototypical running this. This is where we should be. We should have changed our ends. We've got our marker lights on as well. How do we get rid of those? Oh they should be up here. Tail lights. On. Oh, they're operated in the other cab, aren't they? It's typical. You know what? I'm just going to leave it. I can't be asked. There we are. You saying we can't apply power now? What did we do last time? We went to break cut out, didn't we? I broke the sixty six, ladies and gents. Okay, anyway, let's let's just forget about it, right? I'll give up. I can't be bothered. Anyway, let's just have a look around the sixty six anyhow. Um Let's turn our lights off. Okay. So, why can't I move around properly? Okay, so obviously, you know, we have some nice detailing on the front. We have obviously the appropriate hoses. We have nice grease on the buffers there, nicely textured on. Some weathering on the plows. We have uh, the, obviously the headlights, marker lights, and I like the sunshine on there, it's really nice. As we look up, we can see wiper marks on the window screen, which are really, really nice. I'm liking that. We've got this uh, button in the centre here. I never really know what that's for. If anyone knows, just mention it in the comments below, because I'll be interested to find out what that actually is. Danger head, danger overhead light wire stickers, all nicely crisply applied on the model there. We've got lamp irons on there. We have a Buckeye re release bar. We can release the Buckeye. Which is a really nice feature and I believe we can put that back again if we really want to there we go and we can lock it I think no oh, no maybe not okay fair enough but that's that's a cool thing I like that heading up to the roof we've got some nice weathering along the roofing there we've got some details like this grill here which looks really nice we've got a bit of clag coming out of the exhaust we've got some nice exhaust weathering Nice riveting detailing along the top there with the clips on the top of the engine bit there. Got a nice grill there for the, uh, the fans, I'm guessing, that are probably underneath there. Got the nice sort of shed shape at the front there, that's why they get nicknamed sheds. It's pretty much the same this end. We've got the, you know, the Buckeye, you can release the Buckeye and stuff like that. Heading down to the bogies, we've got some nice riveting along the bogies up there as well, as well as handrails and other bits and pieces. Obviously we've got the nice piping which I mentioned before. The steps heading up to the cab are nicely represented. Got the springs there which are nice and, well, crisp. They look detailed. Everything here looks real. 
and, and it's really nice and the way the weathering and I like all the blends of colours and all the different colours in the blending of the weathering there it all looks very realistic and really nice and you can actually see everything you can see the locomotive's workings you can see everything on the underframes and it looks like a proper locomotive the fuel cap does come off that's where we can fuel the loco up if we wanted to and that's all good uh, we've got a nice sort of shiny effect on the uh, from where the sun shines on the side of the loco which is really nice there's a slight weathering on the side of the loco and we have an interior behind that grill which looks nice actually I like how they've done the interior behind the grill it's very very crisply cut I really like this how it's very it's cut with precision you can see the sort of engine behind the grill there and it's a really nice feature to have on the model and yeah we've got more warning stickers as well as uh, these these extra grills and, and bolts and riveting along the side of the loco as well as the handrails on the top there and obviously we've seen inside the cab it all looks very realistic to the prototype it's all it's, it's all present and there we've got nice seating there with nice details in the moquette and warning stickers as well as electric shock and rescue treatment signs and other bits and pieces which are prototypical for being inside the class 66 along with the max speed output and obviously the number of the cab that's the number one cab and if we go to the other end we'll probably see that it says the number two end cab yes it does on the top there which is really nice on there and we have all the little holes and stuff on the roofing of the cab as well which is really nice okay so what do I think of the 66 well I think the model is stunning it looks like a 66 and it is just beautifully well modeled and it, there, there is no fault with the model itself sounds yeah bit pants in all honesty I mean listen to the horn the horn is terrible um, it's just recycled sounds from Railworks and obviously Great Western Express so there's no point obviously of reviewing the Great Western Express 66 now because this is the Great Western Express slash East Coastway class 66 for Train Sim World. It's the same thing, same model, same everything. Um, but yeah, so basically this has been a review, the, the, the review on the class 66 for Train Sim World, East Coastway. I hope you've enjoyed it guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, keep watching our content and we'll come up with some more reviews and releases for train sims such as uh, Railworks and UK, obviously the trains stuff as we do the trains sounds for trains. And yeah, so thank you for watching guys and I'll speak to you guys soon. Goodbye for now.